Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's CDBG Office Hours. I'm Mike Phil, the Federal Bureau of Specialist. Also on the webinar, we have our CDBG Section Chief, Mamie Early, our CDBG Program Manager, Susan Holt, and uh, Fellow Specialist, Tanner Wolverton and Crystal White. And then from our ICF team, we have a Lauren Polk. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with how to ask questions, um, in your user dashboard, there should be a Q&A chat icon, and you can use that to ask questions to our team. Uh, we do ask that you use the Q&A as opposed to the chat. You can ask questions anonymously, but we do ask that you leave your name, organization, or the region you're associated with. Uh, this just better helps us track follow-up and keep any questions grouped together. And then we, re uh, we, really, we will read questions out loud throughout the presentation and provide answers if possible. And then all questions will be saved and recorded as part of the public record. With that, um, Tanner, are you coming to the slide or? Yes, sorry, okay. Mike. No, yeah. no worries. It is the uh, CDBG program's 50th anniversary, and we are seeking photos of completed projects from back to 1970s, 1990s. So if you would happen to have any of those, we would love to see them. Please submit them to. Uh, to Mike at michael.phillips at acd.ca.gov by June 2nd. Uh, so this slide hasn't changed, but um, as a reminder, we have conditionally awarded six applications for 2023 CDBG NOVA, and we have uh, notified applicants of status of their 2023 um, amended uh, NOVA applications on March 21st. All right, artificial intelligence or AI policy. So in recent months, a new practice has emerged of adding AI readers and note takers to our meetings. Um, at, at these meetings, personal identifiable information or PII may be shared. Um, so the department is developing a policy that would restrict these AI readers from meetings where uh, sensitive PII is being shared. Um, and therefore, until this policy is developed, AI readers and note takers will be restricted from all virtual meetings with HCD staff members. Program income reporting and awards. Um, so as we all should know at this point, CDBG grantees are required to report program income or PI receipts to the CDBG program. And in order to add the program income to an amendment or into an application, uh, the PI um, reporting must be completed prior to that happening. New staff and reassignment. So we have hired a couple of new reps and um, the uh, number of grantees will be assigned a new rep in order to balance all of our workloads and the transitions are expected to begin late May or early part of June. All right, and everyone was interested in this last time, so we did want to write this out. So for the 2024 no application types, um, there are three scenarios that, that you could apply for and then um, as a max, so one OTC project plus one OTC program and one competitive, or one OTC project and two competitive, or one OTC program and two competitive. And as a note, um, two OTC projects or two OCD programs or three competitives will not be allowed. Great. All right, Mike. Thank you, Tanner. Um, so let's get into our Q&A recap from office hours two weeks ago. Uh, let's see, our first question was on the 2024 CDBG income limits. Uh, the question was, are the new CDBG CB income limits released today, which was on May 1st, usable? And the answer was the CDBG CB income limits are the same as the CDBG income limits and are effective. This next question was on state income limit updates. And the question was, when will the state update their CDBG limits? And the answer to this was HED will post a formatted version of the income limits from slide eight uh, in the next month or two. Let's see, this next question was on CDBG non-entitlement jurisdictions. Question was, do you have a list of municipalities eligible for CDBG, state, state CDBG? And the answer to this was the list of eligible state CDBG municipalities shifts quite often since jurisdictions can opt into the entitlement program. 
all municipalities that are not autonomous jurisdictions may participate. The best way to find out if your jurisdiction is eligible for a state CDBG program is to reach out to our team to verify. So the next question is on um, CDBG 20, 2023 amendment award timing. And the question was, uh, what is the timeline for award notification or standard agreement execution for the 2023 CDBG NOFA amendment number one? And the answer to this was, we don't have an exact timeline at the moment. We plan to go to our internal loan, loan committee uh, near the end of May to make awards. Afterwards, it may take 30 to 60 days to get standard agreements out. Let's see, this next, this next question was on the 2024 applications. The question was, for the 2024 NOFA, can you apply for duplicate activities? Uh, for example, two different types of feasibility studies, uh, one public facility projects, and one for economic uh, development programs and projects. And the answer to this was, you can apply for a maximum of three awards, uh, two competitive and one OTC. Uh, please refer to slide number six for more details on the 2024 application agreements. The next question was on state eligibility guidelines. The question was, have state CDBG eligibility guidelines been updated to reflect HUD's notice of CBD 2310, use of CDBG, CDBG funds in support of housing? It details changes to the eligibility approach of manufactured housing. And the answer to this was, as this notice did not change what matrix codes or national objective codes are eligible for the 2024 NOFA, ATD does not anticipate making any updates to the eligibility guidelines. Uh, this notice just expanded on the definition of what pieces of manufactured housing projects are eligible for CPPG funding. And let's see, this last question was on the ICF contract updates. Uh, so for CV grants, we used to have regular meetings with HCD or IC, uh, ICF reps. With ICF contract changing, there is currently not any meetings for CV grants with HCD reps. Uh, any way we can get connected for monthly or bi-weekly meetings with HED reps for our CV grantees. And the answer to this was the contract with ICF was recently signed and the grant administrators are currently ramping up. Uh, they will be reestablishing uh, contact and meetings with CDBG grant grantees soon. Great. Uh, that's it for our Q&A recap. So let's get into our live Q&A. Uh, let's see, our first question is from Quentin. Uh, can, mer can multiple jurisdictions co-apply for a single competitive program? Uh, would this apply as uh, one competitive app for each of the co-applicants or would only a lead applicant incur it? Uh, I will take that. So uh, Quentin, we don't have an answer for you at this second. We're gonna um, discuss that offline and then we'll get back to you and then include the answer in our next office hour slides. Thank you, Tanner. Let's um, see, this next question is from Sandra. I've been asked by management about the closeout of older CDBG grants. We are running out of storage space and are wondering if we need uh, if we need to purchase another C train to house all of the files, is there any word on closeouts of older grants? Um, I can tentatively take this one. So thanks for your question, Sandra. Um, generally speaking, once a grant is closed out, there is there can either be a three year or a five year record retention time frame, um, but. I'll need to look into this a little bit more. Um, if you could reach out to your program representative, and in the meantime, I'll do a little research to make sure of what the parameters are and provide you with that information. And I can add a little bit to that as well, um, Susan. I know that um, it's been a question that we have been receiving. So um, we HUD has not closed out their grants. Um, in a while, which is kind of a domino effect with our grantees. So that is something that is currently on our radar to have discussions with HUD on their closeout of the grants so we can give you guys the okay to close out of the grants, the older 
um, grants on your end. So uh, believe me, I'm Sandra, we, that is on our radar. We are having those discussions um, because we do have um, files as well <laughs> that we are hanging on to. So we do have to wait um, until HUD closes out the file before you can actually um, get rid of those files. Thank you, Mimi. Um, okay, next so question is from Quentin. Uh, when will the 2024 CDBG income limits be published? Uh, thank you for your question, Quentin. Uh, HUD has already published the 2024 uh, CDBG income limits and we discussed them in our last meeting. We'll, I will drop the um, information into, I'll drop the link into the chat in just a moment. Uh, what was dropped into the tap and to was the state income limits. That was a question that came out uh, in our last in our last office hour. So I will drop HUD's uh, CDBG income limits into the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, so your next question is from uh, Louise. Would you please post the text from the slide explaining? Uh, what types and the number of applications will be accepted in the uh, coming NOFA? And uh, yeah, I just uh, went back to the slide with this information. So um, you can feel free to copy this. And this will also be in our newsletter that comes out on Friday afternoon. I'll also post it in the chat, Mike. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Tana. And it's also located in our annual action plan as well. Yep. And then just a comment from Sandra, I think maybe maybe address this, but just as I understand the closeout, it's not official until the closeout letter is received by uh, HCD. Right. So there's there is some confusion about that, and we're looking into it, but it's our understanding from from what we've been looking into is we also need HUD to close out the grant with with HCD before we can do that. So it, it's in talks and we're working out the details. So um, Sandra, I would reach out to your program rep um, and see if we can get the ball moving to to give you the information you're looking for. And as soon as we have some overall information, we will absolutely share it in an office hours also. Thank you, Susan. And Sandra, we do have our closeout process of the grant when the grant has expired. Um, so that is a closeout process, but that's separate from record record retention of those closeout documents. Um, so that's where um, we're waiting on HUD to close out the grant for the record retention of you holding on to those files after we close it out, after um, expiration of the grant. So. There's a two-parter. There is a closeout after the expiration of the grant that we do process here, but holding on to the records, you just, you know, once it's closed out, you just don't dispose of the records. You have to hold on to them until you receive an official letter. But Thank you, Mimi. Um, let's see, our next question is from um, Jennifer. So when will you be notifying applicants that submitted applications for the CDBG CV allocation of remaining funds? And I think I could take that one. Um, we're hoping to have out um, kind of a memo explaining our methodology for funding uh, very soon, um, hopefully in like the next week or two. Um, but currently all of the um, submissions that we, we received, we're, we're reviewing them right now. So. Um, that's uh, pretty much all I can share for right now, but we'll we'll give you more details uh, very soon. Uh, so your next question is from Brandy. Can you let us know the latest program year that has been closed by HUD or a list of them that haven't uh, been closed? Thank you, um, Brandy, for that question. Um, that is um, the million dollar question. That is something that we are working with HUD to obtain. Um, all I can say that it's been since the 90s um, that they have closed out um, 
the last program years. So it's been quite a while um, since they closed out. So um, I know that is something that we're, like I said, we're having continuous conversations when we do meet with HUD on a monthly basis regarding um, working on a plan to get these closed out. So as soon as we get more updated and concrete um, information on that process of closing out those HUD, um, those program years, um, we will most definitely um, share that information as soon as we know. Mimi, Mimi can I add that um, HUD has recognized that it's a problem nationwide, closing out all of the uh, open uh, grant entitlements. And so they've put into place a, a method where um, states and local jurisdictions can do bulk closeout. So that's the part that is currently um, under review in, internally on, on our approach to the bulk closeout. I just wanted to add that piece to it. That yeah, thank it, you. Is, uh, it is on the radar. Yes. Thank you. It is. Yeah, thanks, Crystal. And bouncing off of that, um, Janet, thank you for your comment that you still have CDBG files from the 90s. That kind of tracks with what we've been talking about. So appreciate that input. I think we do as well in our in our files, so our room. Okay, um, that looks like all the questions that we have in the chat for now. Um, we'll give everyone another minute or two. Any last minute questions? Oh, I do see someone with their hand raised. Give me one second. Um, Andy, uh, let me see if I can allow you to unmute. Can you unmute and try to talk? Sorry, I think I clicked on that in error. Oh, no worries, no worries. Thanks, Andy. Okay, oh, uh, I see Jeff's hand uh, went up. Jeff, did you have a question? Hi, Mike. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering a while back, I think over a year or so ago, we, we chatted about uh, maybe having some trainings or, or group sessions in regards to folks uh, using CDBG funds for economic development activities. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's still interest in that or plans on that. I'm that I'm just curious about that, um, or if if maybe the ACD might put on some trainings via Zoom or something. Um, especially since you know the NOFA is coming up, and there may be jurisdictions interested in in uh, using CDBG funds for economic development, business loans, or microenterprise, and those kinds of things. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. We the uh, we we did talk a lot about the communities of like developing communities of practice and having those types of uh, meetings. So uh, I think the main roadblock was just staffing capacity at HCD. But now that we've been kind of onboarding a lot more uh, folks, I think we could revisit that and, and try to set those up. So I'll definitely take that to to management and see about setting up those meetings. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Let's see, just got a comment from uh, Janet. There's a loan from our entitlement program days that will be paid soon. My conversations with the county will be issuing a check to the county for the amount. I just want to make sure you also agree that these funds will not be PI that I will report under the non entitlement program.
Okay, so I will take that one. Um, thank you for your question, Janet. It, I, without looking into what your your um, jurisdiction has and what what program you're talking about, what award you're talking about, I would recommend reach out to your um, program rep and we can take a deeper dive and look into it and get you the proper answer. I don't want to give you wrong information here. So that's probably the best way to go about it. And we can look into it and, and let you know definitively. Thank you, Susan. Um, we did get a question from uh, Kristen in the chat. Let me pull it up. Uh, let's see. So for future NOFAs, is it possible to bundle like projects under one ask? We have multiple CSDs that need improvements and are wondering if we can combine the small projects into one CSD improvement project with multiple MOUs, or do these need to be submitted individually? Hello, um, Kristen. I would say um, that is a, such a detailed question and so specific. So this is something that I would want to take one off so I can get more details on um, the, the bundling and the projects that you're speaking about so we can give you more clear direction on um, how to handle that and what you, your ask is. So if you can reach out to um, your representative um, or the CDBG um, at hcd.ca.gov box. And then we can have a conversation about it and um, I can get a little bit more information from you. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that looks like all of the questions that we have for today. So we'll go ahead and close out. So thank you everyone for your attendance and comments and engagement, we really appreciate it. And, oh, got a question came in from um, Luis. Uh, do you have any information on implementation of the changes to CDBG ED programs? I think you're referring to the HUD, you know, I, I'm assuming you're referring to the new changes for reporting that HUD has put in place. We have not received any additional guidance. Um, what we have is what you have, which is on the HUD website. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for your question, Louise. We're still kind of waiting for further information on that front. Uh, thank you, Susan. Um, so we've got a question in the chat from Monica. How can we find more clarification on expectations for uh, reimbursement requests? And uh, Monica, we have a, a grants management manual on our website. I'll go ahead and post the link in the chat. And uh, if you go to scroll down just a little bit, there's a grants management manual tab. And then uh, chapter six is on financial management. And then we have a um, appendices and tools to kind of help with uh, financial reporting um, in the process in e -Civis. So if you have more questions, uh, reach out to us. Yeah. Um, let's see, I've got a question from Brandy. Can you recap those uh, economic development changes? Okay, so I'll take this one. Thank you for that question, Brandy. Um, I don't have my notes right in front of me from when they did their one webinar on it. They do have it listed online, but in just in general, um, it looks like HUD is trying to make the reporting requirements a little bit easier to kind of spur jurisdictions to pick up economic development projects and programs. So it, they're just changing the, the reporting requirements from what I can tell. Um, from the preliminary discussions. I'll look into it a little bit more, but they do have that um, information on the HUD website as far as um, what they're proposing to do. I Again, I don't have my notes in front of me. I think it might be still open to public comment, so it might be a, a, t a good time to to take a look into that. Um, but we'll have some more information for you as soon as, as soon as we receive it.
Thank you, Susan. Um, so you got a question from Kelly. Are these resources uh, maybe from funded applications on how, or are there resources uh, maybe from funded applications on how to structure successful code enforcement programs? Trying to understand how to structure a, a possible application to ensure that it would be competitive and compliant. Kelly, thank you for your um, question there. Um, if you can, like I said, our representatives are here to be able to provide TA to you and be able to assist you in any future applications that you may be um, entertaining, it, even if it's 2024, or 2025. So I highly recommend um, to have these conversations with your representative on scenarios on what is the need in your community um, for code enforcement, what are you trying to do? And then we can kind of um, help you navigate through to stay within the regulatory ramifications of code enforcement, what is what is um, required and what is not, um, what is out of compliance, um, what you can and cannot do, and then help you um, with your application once the application opens, just to let you give everyone a heads up, um, unfortunately, that TA is no longer available uh, once the application period is open. But prior to application, highly, highly recommend to really bounce off ideas to us on potential applications, what the framework looks like, so we can help you navigate the most um, complete and successful application as possible. Thank you, Mimi. Let's see, our next question is from Brandy. I'm assuming those ED changes won't be, wouldn't be applicable to the 2024 grants. Yeah, I can take that one. Thank you, Brandy. Um, I'm not anticipating that they would be out by then, but if HUD releases new, uh, a, an implementation timeline and lets us know that it goes, that it's enacted, then, then we would. But I'm not anticipating that, but the uh, information will be in the 2024 NOFA if the, or in an office hours. We will let you know as soon as we know when it comes through. But I don't anticipate it, but I can't guarantee. Thank you, Susan. Go ahead and give everyone another minute or two in case there's any uh, questions out there. Okay, that looks like all the questions that we have for today. So we'll go ahead and close out. Well, thanks again, everyone, for all your questions and comments. And I hope you could have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week, and we'll see you back in two weeks on, is it the 29th? Yeah, on the 29th. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.